right, so I'm uh, I'm Jason. I'm Pinky. Um, a little bit about myself, I guess. Uh, I'm originally from the Philadelphia area. Um, I was born to a single mom named Teresa. Um, took, you know, a, a village to raise me, I guess you could say, um, between my mom, my grandmother, and my two uncles, and my great aunt. Um, uh, when I was seven years old, I was diagnosed with uh, juvenile diabetes. Um, at age, uh, I guess at about age 13, 14, started experiencing the change of adolescence and the hormonal imbalance of diabetes, and took a toll on it. Took a toll on me. Um, I would go month, weeks without taking my insulin, and um, it was intentional, but not intentional. Um, it landed me in a um, in a group home for a month, try and straighten me out. It did. <laughs> um, needless to say, the people in there weren't like me. Um, they were in there for much worse things than I. Uh, a few years later, um, began having trouble with my eyes. Uh, frequent laser surgeries on my on the retina and things like that. Um, about, I was about 21, 22, uh, I lost vision in my right eye, um, didn't really think much of it, um, lack of insurance probably had something to do with that, um, a couple years go by, I was about 28, 29 years old, and, um, was experiencing very frequent, extremely low blood sugars. Um, I would run high for a day or two, and then all of a sudden my blood sugar would just drop, um, like basement drop, so diabetic should be, you know, between 80 and 110. I was dropping into the 20s and 30s. Um, at one point I had even dropped as low as 9. Um, <clears throat> um, at one point I was rushed to the, uh, the hospital after losing consciousness and when I arrived in the ER they had pulled some blood work and things like that and discovered that um, I had about 15% kidney function left um, and that's what was causing my blood sugar drops. Your, while your pancreas creates your insulin your kidney processes it and it was taking the insulin storing it and then just punching me with it all at once. Uh, a few months after um, after being diagnosed with kidney disease, I had, um, I wound up losing 100% of my vision. Um, that lasted roughly, roughly two months. Um, I was able to regain, at that point, regain limited vision in my left eye. Um, <clears throat> excuse me. Um, few years, well, not a few years, um, I had my first eye surgery uh, roughly a month and a half after I lost my vision. That was in 2006. Um, regained a little bit of vision, went about another year, and had a second surgery on my left eye. A few a month after that, I had had a had a, uh, a surgery on my right eye, which was highly unsuccessful. There was too much scarring. Um, at that point, they told me I'd never regain vision in my right eye. Um, left eye was kind of a, an iffy subject. They didn't know what it would do, where it would go. So, kind of lived with it. Um, at that point, it was kind of like, some days were really clear. Then there were some days where it was like I was looking at a foggy mirror right after you step out of a shower. It was kind of the, kind of the way it went sometimes. Um, roughly, roughly six months after that surgery, um, after being placed on the, the kidney transplant list, I, had, uh, I had began doing dialysis. Um, I didn't do your standard dialysis, going to a clinic and having your blood filtered and things like that. I did a, an at-home type of thing where I had a, 
I had a catheter in my stomach that um, I would go to bed at night, basically inject, insert fluid into my, into my peritoneum, which is like saran wrap around your, your insides. <laughs> and it would, uh, it would mix with the toxins, draw them out, and the machine would pull them pull them out. That would, that would happen overnight. It was like a five, five step cycle. Um, nine months after being placed on the kidney transplant list, um, I received a kidney. Um, they refer to it as a golden match. Um, the best you can do is six antigens. Um, this match was six antigen, but the the doctor said that it was such a good match that this person could have been a sister or a brother or a family member. Um, did not know the person. You know, it was a it was a donor kidney from California. Um, that the transplant was uh, took place in August of 2007. Um, had an awesome transplant team. Kidney took right away. Um, it did well, was doing really well for the first six or seven years. Um, the goal when I had transplant was to do a pancreas transplant also, but the pancreas wouldn't have survived the flight from California to Pennsylvania. Uh, so we just elected to do the, the kidney because it was, uh, it was a match that I couldn't turn down. Um, that being said, the diabetes is now starting to take a toll on the kidney and starting to lose the kidney again. Um, I'm probably uh, roughly with a donated kidney you only have 50% function. That's the best you'll have. Um, I'm probably at about 35% function right now. Uh, let's see. Um, roughly I guess I would say what a year and a half ago. Um, I had I received some great news um, from a new new eye doctor that I was in touch with that they thought that they could do more for my left eye. So we explored it. Um, at first, we were really hesitant about it because the uh, the retinal specialist that was going to do the procedure said it was risky. Um, with me only having vision in my right eye, or I'm sorry, with me not having vision at all in my right eye, um, doing the procedure in the left eye could possibly cause uh, complete vision loss. Um, it was about a 1% chance, but it was still a chance. Uh, mm. My daughter was the one most concerned. Um, she struggles with with my vision as it is. She struggles seeing me like do things and things like that. Like she's, I think she's amazed by what I do. But, she is. Um, I struggle because I want to do stuff for you. Yeah. And you are always yelling at me. Yeah, I'm a very stop. Very independent person. I'm like, oh, let me do that. You want me to read that for you? And he's like, stop. I got it. I can do it. <laughs> um, so after a few months of debate, we decided to go through with the procedure. I uh, had a procedure done. Um, before the surgery, I was deemed by the state as being legally blind in both eyes. Um... About three weeks after the after the surgery was the first follow-up visit that I had where I could actually see. Um, at that point, I think I had tested at 2080 without glasses. Um, and it progressively got better. The best I tested without without glasses was 2070. Um, I believe with glasses, I can see about 20, 30, 20, 40. Um, I have a haze still around the perimeter of my eye and no lower peripheral. peripheral. <laughs> um, 
uh, people have challenged me since I've lost my vision, told me I couldn't do a lot of things. Um, just pushes me. Uh, I now run a, a pool team, a highly competitive pool team, eight ball pool team. Um, I started out as just a player about six years ago, and now I run my own team. Um, there's some other things that I that people have told me I'll never do, and I do them, and I do them well. Um, I don't do it to pat myself on the back. I do it to prove people wrong, and it's you know I I draw a lot of courage um, and and motivation from like the kids I see with worse disabilities than I have accomplishing things. Um, but yeah, that's that's uh, that's pretty much me. Um, it's been a year and a half, close to two years since that surgery. Um, I'm seeing a lot better. Um, we're possible we're looking at the possibility of of me regaining my driver's license. Um, but that's slow baby steps. We'll we'll see. <laughs> um, but yeah, that's basically me in a nutshell. I'm scared about him driving. <laughs> I know people were scared about me driving when I could see. <laughs> yeah, Cause, like when we come home and visit, I'll let him drive down my parents' road because it's a dirt road. I like to go to the right. Yeah, <laughs> he's always like veering off. I'm like, no, no, straight it up, straight it up. Oh, so. The worst case scenario went up in the swamp. It's all right. Swamp or creek, yeah. one on each side. <laughs> so, all right, well, a little bit about me. Um, I'm from Sheffield. I was. I have a sister and two parents that are the best parents in the world. Um, they would do anything for anybody and I'm, I was always like amazed at the stuff that they did for my sister and I growing up because we didn't have a lot. We lived in a trailer, my dad had a junkyard and... Best junkyard around. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, it was just like growing up there was like my parents never drove nice cars. We didn't have the nicest clothes. but. We had animals. Like I had horse. I got my first horse when I was 13, and still don't know how my parents ever paid for that. To just for the the shoes, the shots, and everything. Um, and then slowly ended up getting another horse and another horse, and then goats and pigs. Um, someday I'll have my farm again. I don't know. Maybe. I don't know if I could handle the the cleaning because I'm not a winter person. Um, I have my daughter who is 16 and she is, she's my world. Like, I, she's my best friend and I don't know what I'd do without her. No, I'm gonna cry because <laughs> I love her so much. Um, we've had her ups and downs. We've, her, our past was, was not the, the best, but we, her and I stuck together and we got through it and then I met this guy and we can go from there because <laughs> like so my my past isn't very exciting so but, uh, today is actually um december 27th is the uh it's our it's four years since we officially started dating um although yeah. november 19th i consider because that was the first day we actually uh, met yeah, face well, to she, face she, so that's she, like our one anniversary she was writing our wedding bells the first time we met and it was no it's crazy yeah she was she definitely was the first time we met it was uh i had 24 hours to get to spend with him and that was it like i drove six hours to meet a stranger and i fell in love with him but i'm the crazy one yeah <laughs> you're a little crazy yeah so we we met we are that online <laughs> dating site success story um like you said we met we officially started dating four years ago um year and a half after we began dating uh we got married i was smart picked her birthday but we were actually were planning on getting married but he, he proposed to me and we were going to get married about a year and a half after he proposed um and we had like the what is it? The, I don't know the word. The banquet hall. Yeah. We had it picked out, um, put a deposit on, and it was gonna be about ten thousand dollars. And like after talking to my mom, she's like, 
you guys can't afford them. Like, you know, like I want to have a nice wedding and. So then after talking about it a couple times and we decided to cancel that wedding and we planned a wedding within a month and less than a thousand dollars for everything and it was the best wedding ever. Mm -hmm. That included and the rings, suit, dress, um, my pictures. I just wanted to have nice pictures. Yeah, we had two sets of pictures done. One's where we live and one's where Pinky's from. Um, the ones that were done where Pinky's from were I think actually the better ones. Um, but the ones that we had done, I think, were pretty awesome too, just because of their subject matter. Yeah. Um, never actually had a honeymoon. No. Um, we'll get there one day. Um, there's just been more, more pressing issues in our life. You know, there's other things more important. Um, uh, she turned me, she turned me into a Subaru fan. <laughs> which, you love know. my Subaru. <laughs> Um, before we met, I thought they were, you know, crap cars, and they're not. Yeah. Turns out it's the best little buggy in the snow. <laughs> um, from day one, though, like, I was, from, like, when we first started, when we dated, like, I was, wait, I came down in January for New Year's, and then that's when we decided about, like, me moving down and stuff. And I was going to wait until um, the summer to move down, and, uh, happened out that I could move down sooner because I got fired from my job. <laughs> as soon as she told them that she'd be leaving in May, he's, they let her go immediately. Yeah, he's like, he's like, you can do your two weeks. Um, Caitlin didn't move down with us right away, uh, which really, it hurt because I wanted her with me, but I wanted her to make that decision on her own. So she finished school up, but then one day, and it was in... October? No, September. September 10th. She spent the summer with us. Or I'm sorry, September 6th. She spent the summer with us and then we took her home and when we or we brought her back to her dad and when we came back, she, what, two weeks later, uh, she called. Ten days. Ten days? Ten two days. weeks, ten days. Yeah, ten days later. She got hold of me at nine o'clock at night saying, come kidnap me. And I was just like, I kept on like, can we wait um, a couple days? Like, I'm coming home in October for the for the one festival, and she's like, I can't be here no more. So as I'm like trying to convince her to to stay, Jason's packing the car up. He's like, we're going. We drove all night long, and six hours one way. We went and picked her up, um, brought her home, and she's never gone back. Yeah. Except for like, she'll come back and visit every now and then. But she she drove lives. drove twelve hours. Yeah. Did the 12 hour oh trip in what 20 total hours with no sleep? Yeah. yeah. We, we pulled, we pulled we, over once to sleep. Yeah, in a thunderstorm, which was <laughs> terrifying. Yeah. We were on the top of a mountain. And it was just terrifying. Bolts of lightning coming down everywhere. And at, at that point, I said it was time to go. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah. But I, was, I was always like, my goal was to always do things while Jason can see. Like, while well, he still has his vision, or what he had, because we never knew if it was going to get better or worse. Um, like, there was one night we got into a fight, and, well, not really a fight, I have a lot of insecurity issues, and he handles me well. Um, <laughs> but he got, we were, I was mad at him, and it was stupid, and I was outside sulking, because he wouldn't apologize, because he doesn't, he was, he was right, and he shouldn't have had to apologize to me. I'm always so, right. Yeah, he is. But there's lightning bugs outside, so I caught a lightning bug, put it in a jar form so he could see it because he, I remember him saying that it's been a long time since he was able to see a lightning bug. So I scooped it up and took it in the house and did you, I don't know if you really saw or if you were just yeah. making me happy. Yeah, I was able to see them. <laughs> once, we, once we turned the lights in the house off, I was able to yeah. see them. Um, outside, it's really tough for me to see lightning bugs. It was. I mean, it's not so bad anymore. Um, but back then it was it was rough. It was it just because of the little bit of light that they put off doesn't travel really well. So I was always really trying to, I'll, or I'll like take pictures so that he can zoom in on them and see things. And like I was talking to his mom, like this is before we were talking about getting married. I was talking to his mom and just told her like you know all the things I want to do with him and show him, let him see before. Because again, we didn't know what was going to happen with his vision. Like, I wanted him to be able to see me in my wedding dress. <sighs> Try not to cry. And, uh, and, and have a baby and do all that stuff. Like, so we, we started right away. And 
like I said, we've it's been four years and there's nothing. So now we're looking into like possibly having to do IVF treatments, but insurance, insurance doesn't pay for it. So we're like trying to trying to get things on track so that we can work towards that. Um, sometimes I wonder if we're just if I'm just too old. I don't know if I can handle another baby. <laughs> I know we could. He'd be great. He'd be a great dad because he is. He's a great dad to Caitlin. Um, so those are like all. The, and now that his vision is kind of stabilized, it kind of gives me like a little bit of a breathing room. But I still, there's still like a lot of things that I want want him to see. So his vision is like very everything. Like I, doctor's appointments, I sit there and just I start crying. They're like, oh, he can see. Like, and I start crying. Or when they were talking about his kidneys starting to fail. And it's just like, I don't know if I can handle that because I love him and I don't know nothing happened to him. She is, <laughs> she has never told me no when I asked to do something. Nope. You know, it's always been, hey, you know, I want to go here. Okay. So I encourage them, like to, like when we go to the gun range and stuff, like people are like, you're blind, how can you shoot guns? And it's like. Put your target up, look at the mine. Yeah. Like I encourage him to do it. Um, I encourage him to, like when we come down to visit my parents, like, come on, you want to drive? I'll let you drive. And <laughs> like, it, it scares me, but because <laughs> I don't want to end up in a ditch. <laughs> That's why we have seat belts and side yeah. mounted, or, or side mounted airbags. <laughs> but he only drives on the dirt road where there's like, nobody else is coming. Yeah. Um, yeah, it's privately on dirt road, so you can't arrest me. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But, uh, and like, it's funny it's because my, like even my, I compare him to my dad because everybody said you want to marry somebody like your father, and I'm like, see, my dad has really bad vision. Um, Opposite eye of mine. Yeah, <laughs> my dad loves to cook. He loves to cook. Um, my family comes first in my dad's life. His family comes first. Um, what else? And just uh, except for my dog, I don't know. Yeah, my yeah. dad is <laughs> much of a he. My it's, my dad's not an animal person, but my mom has four dogs and a bunch of cats. Psychotic dogs. <laughs> yeah, her dogs are crazy, but she <laughs> loves them. Um, and we love her. Oh, and now with my dad missing his leg, we, we're like, well, Jason doesn't have his own kidney, so mm -hmm. they're like kind of battling for body parts. We're bionic. Yeah, so I'm like, I'm like I married somebody who's just like my dad. <laughs> Which is a, it's a compliment. Yeah. It's one of the, one of the most admirable, bravest men I know is her dad. Yeah, he's always been there, and Jason's always been there for me since since then. Like, I just had a procedure done, and I was talking to my dad, <laughs> like, like I said, you know, it's the first time I'm ever going to have be put under for something and wake up, I'm like, and you're not going to be there. And my dad's like, well, call me. Take, take my picture with you, and that way when you wake up, Jason can hold it, and you can see it. <laughs> I'm like, how about I just call you when I'm done? But it was, it was kind of like, seeing Jason's there. He'll be there for me. Are you crying? Yeah, your dad. Yeah, my dad. Like we almost lost him over the summer, so that that was hard. It was like my sister called me. She's like, "You need to come home now." So I'm glad yeah. he's here. Cause yeah. he, I, I need my dad still. <laughs> Even though I have you, I still need my dad. <laughs> when I first moved down here, I had a hard time. Not, I didn't have a hard time finding jobs, but. I just didn't, I was having a hard time finding a job that was gonna help help us out. Um, I got a job at Sam's Club. I loved it, but it was just it wasn't enough hours. The pay was great, just not enough hours and no benefits. And then I had to go into a cleaning company. Um, we'll skip over that. And then I got my dream job, <laughs> my dream job at um, at Petco, and I loved it there. But again, it was just, I got to hang out with dogs all day long. You became a certified dog trainer. Uh, yeah, I became a dog trainer. I never got the actual certification for it because I ended up quitting shortly after because I just, again, I remember coming home on the 4th of July. He was at his friend's house and as we're watching fireworks, I like, like said, I'm so tired of being broke. Like, we, I, something has to give because, like, if it wasn't for my friend Jane, we would have lost our car. We would have lost so much and... And his grandma, she's been really great for it with our rent and stuff. Um, so it's just like having to, like I need to find something. And his mom has been trying to get me a job at the state, or trying to get me to apply for my job. And I kept telling her, like, no, it's not something I want to do. I don't, 
I don't know if I like it. I don't know anything about dietary or anything like that. And finally, I'm like, I'm just so tired of being broke. And just, so I applied there and I got my job and I love it. Like I couldn't imagine not having this job. And I had the opportunity to, opportunity to transfer to a different facility if I wanted to, but I, can't, I couldn't leave it because I get to hang out with, I hang out with veterans all day long. Like, who would not love hanging out with veterans? They are just some of the best guys ever. And so, and now we're just, now it's like trying to catch up on our past is just with financial ways and everything like that. Now that this job is, pays us and, or pays me enough and with what he gets, but I have health insurance, we have our car, we have our, a roof overhead, food in the cupboards. We have everything important. Yeah. Money doesn't make everything, but... No, not at all. <laughs> we, we got a good love for each other. It's, it's kind of therapeutic for me because I don't really talk about... No. ...about me that often. But yeah, I don't, like... If people ask me about, like, my kidney or my vision or stuff like that, I'll talk to them about it, but, like, I don't really talk about me, you know? It's, I guess that's something you need to understand about when my blood sugar drops is I become very, I don't know if it if it portrays physically, but I feel very jumpy, um, almost like I'm having a seizure sometimes. It does portray, you, does it? you can see it because I remember one night when we were leaving Walmart when your sugar was dropping, and I start you were like, doing like the, you're like, convulsing almost. Yeah, like his, and like I, I feel bad because I feel like people are staring at us and they're like, oh, look, that guy's drunk because that's why he, he looks like somebody who's drunk. Yeah. And I don't care. Like I don't care what people think of me. It's it's fine. You can think what you want. Um, I always feel bad though, cause I'm like yeah. I don't want people thinking like, and that's I think that's where like he wants people to realize that you know, when your sugar drops, your body is uncontrollable and, and so scary. Sadly, society wants you to wear wear your disabilities on your sleeve, and people with disabilities, we just want to be normal you know and it's um our pastor his words will always live with me and it's you know he he refuses to call me disabled um he refers to me as differently abled um where i exceed in other things that people don't you know and it's it's you know it's good to see that there are people out there that do recognize that you know um I'm also not one to abuse being disability. It's being being disability, <laughs> being disabled. It's it's not an excuse. You know, if if I can't do something, it's because of me. It's not because of my disability. Um, I'm also a firm subscriber to there are no can'ts. There are only wants or won'ts. Um, hey, you learn with me, like. Don't tell me I can't do something because I'm gonna try my hardest. Like, yeah, one of the hardest workers I know. Yeah. Her 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 work ethic is unbelievable. Um, I, I, <laughs> I, I so uh, yeah. With all that being said, um, I guess the goal of us working with happenstance, um, for me anyway, um, would kind of hope that people realize that everybody has their hurdles in life and it's really all about accepting them and if you don't accept the hurdles you don't accept your past you can't move on um, I've said it before um, life is about failure and if you don't fail you can't succeed um, so you know I hope people see this and take from it what they will but um so yeah uh you know at the end of the day there are no can'ts only won'ts that's the most important thing to remember i guess i'm just i'm looking forward to working with happenstance and making my life better and making um caitlin the help hoping that caitlin's life gets better from this experience and our life as a family will get better. Um, I'm always trying to think of the positive. I've 
I was told once if you put positive out, you get positive back. And lately, like this past year has just been nothing but ups and downs for us. And we've been on a slow uphill good stuff happening, like with my dad getting better, um, Caitlin working on herself and getting herself better. Uh, and then just us as a family getting better and stronger every day. So I'm just really looking forward to getting to do all that stuff. And I just I hope people will look at this experience and like he said, we'll get something out of it. Yeah. Hopefully get a few laughs. Yeah. Yeah. Well it's not all about tragedy. No. It's not. <laughs>